Hey everyone. So this is gonna be sort of a, an update video. I've got a bunch of little things to show you guys. None of them are really worth their own video. So I'm gonna put them all together in sort of a potpourri and try and get you guys up to date on a number of things. You can use the navigation bar in the bottom if you wanna skip around. Otherwise, just keep listening. I'll try and keep this relatively brief. I just finished up a nice excursion with um, some of the guys from Grizzly's Granola and we had a nice little trail run yesterday, camped by a lake, and I'll have that video coming out in a few weeks. I also still have the video of the adventure Colin and I took and that will be coming up uh, in some number of weeks as well. And I know I've promised the review on the van top uh, dash cam rear view mirror video display. That will be coming up also. So I've had to sort of adjust my schedule a little bit because I had an opportunity to come up, which is to go to Overland Expo in Flagstaff. I sort of scrambled my schedule a little bit and I've been trying to finish a couple of little things on the truck and ready for me to be gone for a week or so. So yeah, Expo, that's probably the, the big announcement here. I've been invited to attend as a guest. I'm not part of a vendor booth. The truck won't be on display, anything like that. But uh, I'm there to help cover a new product release and I can't really talk about it, but uh, you'll see it soon enough on the channel. But mostly I'll just be there attending Expo like anyone else, wandering around, checking everything out. I know at Expo there's all kinds of really amazing gear, amazing vehicles, and a lot of ways that you can spend a lot of money. My goal wandering around Expo is to look for some solutions that are, are a little more budget-minded or look for interesting concepts that could possibly be replicated on a DIY basis. So that's sort of that's sort of what I want my focus to be at Expo. But I would like to know what you guys would like to see covered. Honestly, myself, I'm not really fond of watching videos that people film at Expo. Maybe in part just because it's so much gear that I have no intention of spending the money on. But I'd love to tailor my Expo video to what you guys would like to see. So just let me know in the comments below what kinds of things you might be interested in seeing covered while I'm down there. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this winch mount that is now on the front of the truck. I just put this on the other day. So this was actually generously supplied to me by uh, a subscriber, someone who watches the channel and follows me on Instagram. And uh, his name is Bruce Peril. I'll put uh, a link to his Instagram in the description below. Um, he has a really amazing Frontier build that's way beyond anything you'll ever see on this truck. So definitely go check that out. Bruce had this on his truck before and he got a different bumper and uh, he sent this to me to use. Also a quick thank you to my friend Sean. That's a Silver RD1. He had the tools to get these bolts off that I just couldn't get them off myself. And so I ran over to Sean's place and uh, we popped the old bumper beam off and put the winch mount on. Well, thanks for helping me get that on there, Sean. Hey, yeah, no problem, dude. Glad, glad to help. My goal is to actually do some of the bumper fab myself uh, using my newly acquired welding skills. <laughs> I did not want to tackle this part of it. This is quarter inch steel, um, and this thing has to be absolutely done very, very well, very solidly, because it theoretically could be holding the weight of the truck if I've got to winch out someplace. I'm really happy to have this. I think this is just gonna be sort of the foundation, and I will build off of that myself, at least that's the idea. We'll see how that goes. I do still need to figure out what I'm gonna do for a winch here. I asked the question on Instagram, and I got really some mixed responses. Uh, many people say, you just got to go with Warren. You need to be 100% sure you've got a reliable winch on there. A lot of people say they've had excellent luck with the uh, budget Harbor Freight winches. And a number of people also just simply interested in seeing me run the Harbor Freight winch to see how it goes. Because it's true that on my channel I try to do things on a budget and you can get into a Harbor Freight winch for a lot less money than a Warren winch. I'm still kicking that around. Uh, you can comment below with your thoughts, uh, which way you think I should go. There's also Rough Country Makes a Winch, uh, Smitty Built, those are the others. Those I think are the main four that, uh, that seem to come up regularly. I know there are some other brands out there, but let me know what you think I should put on here. I don't think I'll get that done before I go to Expo. So while I'm down there, I may be able to do some additional research and talk to some people and get some additional insights. But uh, let me know what you think. One of the recent changes I'm really excited about is my new support for my fridge and these little drawers in here. 
Now, I actually fabricated this myself. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's much more solid than the rickety sort of temporary wood thing that I threw together shortly after buying the truck. It is very, very solid. It's bolted in. I've got a little bit of video of putting this thing together. So if you're interested in seeing that, just keep watching. If you don't really want to see what went into making this, um, then again, just use the, use the navigation thing at the bottom of the video to jump to the next section. When I first quickly threw together this... Uh sort of support for the fridge, I knew it was going to be a temporary measure. The construction is not particularly strong, and um, honestly, I'm surprised it's uh, it hasn't completely fallen apart yet. This is some scrap that I had from other projects. I'm going to use some of that, and I did go and buy a little bit more angle steel at the steel yard. One of the things I love about having the uh, Jackery 1500 power station just right here in the truck, even when I'm running around town, is that uh, when I need to get supplies for a project, such as metal or wood, which often comes in longer lengths than I can get into my short truck, I can just bring power tools with me and plug right in here. I'm at the steel yard and I bought a 10 foot length of uh, angle steel um, for a project I'm working on and it's not going to fit in here but I'm ready to cut it in half. If you want to see how strong that velcro is it's literally stronger than the wood structure that's underneath it. <laughs> In the process of working on all these projects, I broke down and bought a small drill press from Harbor Freight. I can't believe how well that works. That's so clean and precise. I, I can't believe I waited this long to get something like this. I had no idea uh, it could be quite so affordable. I actually looked on Craigslist. I found a couple for around $50. I ended up getting this one new at Harbor Freight. Uh, it was a very good price and it was well reviewed. Um, and I think for my uses, it's going to be just fine. So for support on the bottom level, I basically just salvaged scraps from the previous fridge support and uh, I have bolted those in. So those bars of wood going across there plus this thin piece of plywood provides a support for the drawer units and brings the level up so that those won't run into the metal framework. And this gives me a nice easy surface to just put uh, some screws down in through the drawer framework to attach these. This piece is just the same piece that was on top of the previous fridge support in the truck. It's since I already had the Velcro and these things on there and it was close enough to the right size, I just went ahead and reused it. I masked off the Velcro and just painted the outside so once the fridge is on there, uh, you'll just see the black. It's not quite long enough for the top of that. Eventually, if I were to get a different fridge, I would just adapt a new piece that would fit the new fridge and I think this will support it just fine even if the new fridge is bigger in, in one direction or another. Same thing down here, this piece of plywood supporting the drawers uh, was a scrap that I had and it was just not quite long enough. Ultimately that's tucked way, way back uh, inside so that's not too big of a deal. It may even be handy to have uh, as a pass through for cords. All right, I think. It is done. Just need to bolt it in. I 
love how my different types of gear is all organized now in their own little drawers. Uh, I just camped with it for the first time last night and this worked out so well. I like it so much better than the three big drawers that I had in there. And really, I just, I just like the way that looks much better than the, the wood contraption that I had in there before. Pretty much ever since I got the Frontier, people have been asking me about the rear axle breather modification. Now this is a really commonly done procedure on the Nissan Frontier because the factory breather just sits right on top of the axle and is prone to getting clogged up with uh, dust and mud and whatever. And then uh, pressure builds up and you end up blowing out axle seals. One of my Patreon supporters who you sometimes see comment on my videos as Frontier Rock 16 actually sent me the kit to do the rear axle breather mod and so thank you very much todd really appreciate that so i have done that some people have asked me to make a video about it but it is a really really simple procedure and there are a bunch of videos on youtube already so i didn't bother filming it basically you just you just unscrew the the factory breather and you screw in the hose connection from the kit run the hose up someplace and that's basically it so all of you who have been worried uh, about my rear axle breather, it's all good. The mod's been done. Uh, I'm taken care of there. One interesting little twist that did come up with doing that mod actually had to do with the canopy. Typically, the people will run the breather hose up into the tail light where the tail light sits. But what I've discovered is that I'm unable to remove these tail lights because of the canopy. The screws are accessed through there and uh, I, I, I can't get to them. I can't get to them without taking the canopy off or at least loosening up and sliding it back out of the way. So that's sort of uh, one little detail about adding the barn doors that um, I didn't know about and didn't think about. So this hose, I've just got this hose coming out here. So one of the things that I discovered when I was putting in the rear axle breather is that these holes in the side of the truck bed itself are just open to the ground below. So I think that's a spot that dust could be sucking in and you can see it sort of accumulated on these flat surfaces here. So I got this Gorilla Tape. I've never used it before, but it says that it grips smooth, rough, and uneven surfaces. So I'm hoping it'll stick fairly well to the uh, sort of granular texture of the bed liner that's in the truck, and we can get those holes sealed up. Oh, that does seem to seal on there pretty nicely. So all the way up under here, I've discovered there's actually some openings in the metal there also, and they seem to go right outside. Because if I put my finger up in there on the top of that, it is full of dust. So I think those all need to be sealed also. All right, so that pretty much covers what I wanted to tell you about before I head off to the Southwest for a week. I do plan on after Expo, as long as I'm down that far uh, in the Southwest, uh, sort of explore my way back up towards home, and cut up through a corner of Utah, maybe check out a little bit of Nevada. I'm not sure yet. Um, that's one of the things I have to do in the next week is figure out exactly what I'm gonna do after Expo. But I've never, I've never done anything in the Southwest at all, and so, Driving all those miles down there, I definitely want to take advantage and see some truly different kind of country. All right, so I will have some nice Oregon adventures coming up on the channel soon, plus uh, adventures from the Southwest and coverage of Overland Expo. Thank you for watching. Sun on me.